In order for the cells of our body to actually be able to use the energy that is stored within the chemical bonds of triglyceride molecules, three things must actually take place. Number one is, the triglycerides must be broken down and mobilized into fatty acids within the fat cells of our body. And once these fatty acids are mobilized, they travel into the bloodstream and then move into the cytoplasm of the target cell. And once inside that target cell, the second thing that must happen is the fatty acid must be activated and it must be transported into the matrix of the mitochondria. Now the third thing that must happen is once inside, the, once that fatty acid is inside the matrix of the mitochondria of that target cell, the fatty acid must be broken down into acetyl coenzyme A molecules. And this is what I'd like to focus on in this lecture. So, I'd like to focus on the degradation, the breakdown of fatty acids into acetyl coenzyme A molecules as it takes place in the matrix of the mitochondria of the target cell. So let's suppose our fatty acid, which is fully saturated and contains an even number of carbon atoms, actually makes its way into the matrix of the mitochondria of the target cell. What happens within the matrix? Well, within the matrix, we basically have a series of four reactions that basically take place. And these reactions ultimately shorten that carbon chain of the fatty acid by two because they release an acetyl coenzyme A molecule. And this process will basically take place over and over and over until the entire fatty acid is actually broken down into these acetyl coenzyme A molecules. And these acetyl coenzyme A molecules can then be fed into the citric acid cycle, which also takes place in the matrix of the mitochondria. And the citric acid cycle can actually help generate the high energy ATP molecules. So once again, once the fully saturated fatty acid that contains an even number of carbon atoms makes its way into the matrix of the mitochondria in the, in the acyl coenzyme form, it then undergoes a series of four reactions that ultimately shorten the carbon chain by two and release an acetyl coenzyme A molecule. And this process recurs within the matrix of the mitochondria. It takes place over and over and over until the fatty acid is fully broken down into these acetyl coenzyme A molecules. So what exactly are these four steps? Well, step one is the oxidation step. It's an oxidation by a specific type of molecule we call FAD, where FAD stands for flavin adenine dinucleotide. The second step is a hydration step. The third step is another oxidation step, but now it is oxidized by NAD+. And the final step is a thiolytic cleavage by coenzyme A molecule. So let's begin by focusing on the first step, the oxidation of flavin, the oxidation by flavin adenine dinucleotide. So we begin with our fatty acid in the acyl coenzyme A form. So this is the activated form of the fatty acid. And an enzyme known as acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase basically catalyzes the formation of a double bond between carbon-2, the alpha carbon, and carbon-3, the beta carbon. So remember that this is the alpha carbon and this is the beta carbon. And so we're forming a double bond, a pi bond, between the alpha and the beta carbon. In the process, we essentially oxidize this fatty acid chain. We remove two electrons and we place those two electrons onto this electron acceptor, the flavin adenine dinucleotide molecule. So we reduce the FAD into FADH2. And once we reduce the FAD into the FADH2, those two electrons are then transferred from the FADH2 and onto another flavin protein molecule known as the electron transferring flavoprotein. And that basically is the ETF that we have here.
So the two electrons are taken from that acetyl coenzyme A molecule and placed onto FAD to form the FADH2. Then those electrons move onto another flavor protein molecule, ETF, electron transferring flavor protein. Then those electrons move onto a different enzyme known as ETF dehydrogenase. So this basically contains sulfur ion groups or ion sulfur groups and they can accept those electrons and finally those electrons are ultimately transferred onto ubiquinone which is found on the inner membrane of the mitochondria and that reduces that ubiquinone into ubiquinol and the ubiquinol can then transfer those two electrons onto the second proton pump found within the electron transport chain and that generates 1.5 ATP molecules. So the FADH2 that is produced in this oxidation step of the metabolism, the breakdown of the fatty acid, basically is used to form 1.5 ATP molecules. So once again, in the first step, we have an oxidation reaction in which the acyl coenzyme A is oxidized into enoyl coenzyme A with a trans double bond between the alpha and the beta carbon. So this molecule, the product molecule, is known as the trans delta 2 enoyl coenzyme A where the delta 2 basically means we have a double bond between the second carbon that's why we have the second superscript, a superscript the two superscript and the third carbon here and notice it's a trans which means these two H atoms point along different directions. Now, the electrons that are taken from the acyl coenzyme A are transferred onto flavin adenine dinucleotide, and then it is, it is reduced into FADH2. And the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is the acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase. Now, actually, we have three isozyme versions, three isozyme forms of acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase. We have one that is known as the long chain acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase hydrogenase we have one that is called the medium chain and one that is called uh, that is called the short chain now the long chain basically acts on fatty acids that contain anywhere from 12 to 18 carbon atoms the medium chain acts on fatty acids which contain anywhere from 4 to 14 carbon atoms and we're only talking about even number of carbon atoms and the short chain one acts on fatty acids that contain four or six carbon atoms. So as we, as we discussed in this particular section, once the two electrons are transferred onto FADH2, which is actually a prosthetic group found on this enzyme, the two electrons are then moved onto ETF, then onto an enzyme we call ETF dehydrogenase, and then finally they are used to actually reduce ubiquinone into ubiquinol. And the ubiquinol carries those two electrons onto the second proton pump found along the electron transport chain. And so we see that the FADH2 that is produced in this oxidation step basically generates 1.5 ATP molecules along the protons, uh, along the proteins of the electron transport chain, ETC. Now let's move on to step two. So step two is basically a hydration step and it is catalyzed by an enzyme known as enoyl coenzyme hydratase. So we take this same product molecule, trans delta 2 enoyl coenzyme A, and now it acts as a reactant in this particular step. So this enzyme uses a water molecule to basically attach a hydroxyl group onto carbon 3, onto the beta carbon. And so we transform this double bond here into this alcohol group that is now attached onto the carbon, the third carbon, the beta carbon. And notice that if we begin with the trans version, which we do in this particular case, this enzyme will act on the trans version and form the L isomer. If this was the cis, the enoyl coenzyme hydratase would, would still be able to act on this cis structure, but it would form the D isomer. But in this particular case, because we do have the trans, we're only going to form the L isomer of 3-hydroxyacyl coenzyme A. 
Now, this is important because the enzyme that a hydro, uh, the enzyme that catalyzes the third step only acts on the L molecule, the L isomer, not the D isomer. So, in the second step, we have the enzyme enoyl coenzyme A hydratase adds a hydroxyl group onto the beta carbon, and this creates the L isomer version of hydroxyacyl coenzyme A. Now, let's move on to the third step. In the third step, we have a second oxidation step actually taking place. So this was the first oxidation step, and this is the second oxidation step. And in this particular case, the molecule that is basically abstracting, abstracting those electrons is not FAD, but it's NAD+. So nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide. And so the NAD plus extracts two electrons as well as an H ion and it forms the NADH. It also releases an H plus ion. So essentially the NADH molecule grabs this H atom along with the two electrons and that releases the H plus ion and that forms a double bond between this oxygen and this carbon. So we ultimately transform the alcohol group into a keto group that contains this carbonyl group shown here. So this molecule is known as the 3 keto acyl coenzyme A. So the third step is a second oxidation step in which the hydroxyl group on the third carbon, the beta carbon, is transformed into the keto group in the process that reduces a nicotine amine adenine dinucleotide molecule. Now, the enzyme that basically catalyzed this step is the L3 hydroxyacyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase and it only acts on the substrate molecule if it's the L isomer. And that's why this step is so important. It has to form the L isomer, not the D isomer, because if this was the D isomer, this specific enzyme would not be able to actually bind that substrate molecule. Now, once we carry out the second oxidation step, this molecule is now ready to actually be cleaved. So in the final step, we have a cleavage by coenzyme A. So we have a second coenzyme A molecule that comes into the reaction and it uses its thiol group to actually cleave the bond between the second, the alpha carbon, and the third carbon, the beta carbon. And because it's the thiol group of the coenzyme A that is acting as a nucleophile and cleaving that bond, this cleavage is known as a thiolytic cleavage of by coenzyme A. Now, the enzyme that catalyzes the final step of this process is the beta ketothiolase enzyme. So, in the final step, beta ketothiolase catalyzes the cleavage of the sigma bond between the second carbon and the third carbon. And so, in this particular reaction, the molecule that is the nucleophile is another coenzyme A. So, the coenzyme A acts as a nucleophile and uses the thiol group to basically carry out this thiolytic cleavage reaction. Now, notice because the reaction took place on the beta carbon of the fatty acid, and this was an oxidation reaction, we call this particular pathway the beta oxidation pathway. So this series of four reactions that basically takes place over and over and over until that fully saturated fatty acid is completely converted into these acetyl coenzyme A molecules is known as the beta oxidation pathway. So once we actually generate those acetyl coenzyme A molecules, they are then fed into the citric acid cycle. And in the next lecture, we're going to discuss how many ATP molecules are actually formed in this process. So when this entire fourth step process actually takes place, one time we generate a single FADH2 molecule and a single NADH molecule and these can then go on the electron transport chain to help generate ATP molecules as we'll discuss in the next lecture. And we also generate the acetyl coenzyme A product that now can enter the citric acid cycle.
Now, notice this other product that is formed in, in, in uh, this step is different than this, pro than this molecule that we began with. This molecule contain a certain number of carbon atoms, let's say, for instance, n number of carbon atoms, then this product will be shortened by two, so it will contain n minus two number of carbon atoms.